through 70 in speed. And I want you to focus as we read on how we as humans express ourselves. I want you to be thinking. As we read, how do we how do we express ourselves, we as humans? What helps us express ourselves? Do we need to express ourselves? Uh, who helps us express ourselves? In what ways do we express Our ourselves? Peers. Our peers help us express ourselves? Yes. And how do we see that with Melinda? Um, she or what, she, what Melinda is talking about? Uh, well, she doesn't really have groups. Okay, but, but she talks about a lot of different groups, right? Yeah. So how, how does that play into? Maybe she doesn't really want to be with the Okay, so she's expressing herself by staying away? Yes. Okay, and she's talking about um, a lot of different groups, and they express themselves in certain ways, right? The Marthas, for example, express themselves by doing what? What do the Marthas do to express themselves? The group that Heather is trying to get into. They don't make fun of people. What do they do? What did she just talk about? So posters, decorating, things like that. They, the Marthas uh, express themselves by doing things for others. Okay, so let's think about that as we read. Um, bottom page 61, wishbone. I want to make a memorial for our turkey. Remember the turkey from yesterday, from their Thanksgiving meal. Oh. Uh, I don't remember. Ne ne never has a bird been so tortured to provide such a lousy dinner. I dig the bones out of the trash and bring them to art class. Mr. Freeman is thrilled. He tells me to work on the bird, but keep thinking tree. Mr. Freeman, you are on fire, Melinda. I can see it in your eyes. You're caught up in the meaning, in the subjectivity of the effect of commercialism on this holiday. This is wonderful, wonderful. Be the bird. You are the bird. Sacrifice yourself to abandon family values and canned yams. Do you think that's what she's actually doing? What? That she's sacrificing herself to a, uh, yeah. abandon family values and canned yams? Okay. What is she doing? Why would you pick um, turkey bones out of the trash and go do something with them? Yeah. No? Why not? Okay, it's disgusting because you would you are expressing yourself in another way. She's picking them out though because she wants to do something with herself. With them herself. And so, what way has she been expressing herself lately? Art, right. So she decided, I'll take these. And they do kind of represent part of her family, in a way, because they represent what she did yesterday, or that day, with her family for Thanksgiving. Let's see what she comes up with. She says, whatever. At first, I want to glue the bones together in a heap like firewood. Get it? Tree, firewood. Uh, but Mr. Freeman sighs. I, I can do better, he says. I arrange the bones on a black piece of paper and try to draw a turkey around it. I don't need Mr. Freeman to tell me it stinks. By this point, he has thrown himself back into his painting and has forgotten we exist. He is working on a huge canvas. It started out bleak, a gutted building along a gray road on a rainy day. He spent a week um, trying to paint, uh, or a week painting dirty coins on the sidewalk, sweating to get them just right. He painted the faces of school board members peering out of the windows of the building. Then he put uh, bars on the windows and turned the building into a prison. His canvas is better than TV because you never know what is going to happen next. He's really expressing himself. He's telling a story, basically, with his, with his painting, right? Talking about the, the board members that he evidently has a grudge against. I crumple the paper and lay out the bones on the table. Melinda Sordino, anthropologist. I have unearthed the remains of a hideous sacrifice. Okay, who knows what an anthropologist is? Other, uh, like a scientist that does like, old uh, bones and stuff like that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The ist is the person. The ology is the what? Animal. The ology, kind of with science, the we have bi uh, biology, uh, criminology, the what of 
bio, the what of crime, the ology part. What's it mean? What's that suffix mean when you hear ology? What's that mean? The ology. Scientology, the study of science. Biology, the study of bio or life. Criminology, the study of crime. So the ologist is the person who studies um, life archaeology. Like that, where people come from. Um, bones, structures of civilizations, of cultures. So where they come from. And so she's she's feeling like that must be what she is, since she's got these bones. The bell rings. And I look at Mr. Freeman with puppy dog eyes. He says he'll call my Spanish teacher with some kind of excuse. I can stay for another class period. When Ivy hears this, she begs permission to stay late, too. She's trying to conquer her fear of clowns. She cons uh, she's constructing some weird sculpture, a mask behind a clown's face. Mr. Freeman says yes to Ivy, too. She waggles her eyebrows at me and grins. Um, by the time I figure out that this might be a good time to say something friendly to her, she's back at work. Now, this is Ivy, who used to be her friend, but she, we know she doesn't have any friends anymore. But this is something that's actually very positive for her. This is the first time that, that anybody that used to be her friend has done anything positive. So we can tell um, we can tell right now that maybe something is going to happen, right? Yes. Because all of a sudden it's the first time a positive thing with her former friends has happened. I glue the bones to a block of wood, arranging the skeleton like a museum exhibit. I find knives and forks in the odds and end bins and glue them so it looks like they're attacking the bones. I take a step back. It isn't quite done. I rummage in the bin again and find a half-melted palm tree from a Lego set. It'll do. Mr. Freeman hangs on to everything a normal person would throw out. Happy Meal toys, lost playing cards, grocery store receipts, keys, dolls, a, a salt shaker, trains. How does he know this stuff could be art? I pop the head off a Barbie doll and set it inside the turkey's body. Ah, oh, looking good, huh? That feels right. Ivy walks past and looks. She arches her left eyebrow and nods. I wave my hand, and Mr. Freeman comes over to inspect. He almost faints with delight. Mr. Freeman, excellent, excellent. What does this say to you? Darn, I didn't know there'd be a quiz. I clear my throat. I can't get any words out. It is too dry. <clears throat> I try again with a little cough. <clears throat> Mr. Freeman, sore throat? Don't worry, it's going around. Want me to tell you what I see? I nod in relief. I see a girl caught in the remains of a holiday gone bad, with her flesh picked off day after day as the carcass dries out. The knife and fork are obviously middle-class sensibilities. The palm tree is a nice touch. A broken dream, perhaps? Plastic honeymoon. Deserted island? Oh, if you put it, put it in a slice of pumpkin pie, it could be a deserted island. I laugh in spite of myself. I'm getting the hang of this. Well, I be. And Mr. Freeman, watch. I reach in and pluck out the Barbie's head. I set it on top of the bony carcass. There's no place for the palm tree. I toss that aside. I move the knife and fork so they look like legs. I place a piece of tape over Barbie's mouth. Me. Do you have any twigs, little branches? I could use them to make the arms. Okay, now here's the first time we actually hear her speaking in class. Thank you. The first time we actually hear her speaking in class, which tells us what about Melinda and what about this class? Well, she does. This is the place when if this is the only place that she's speaking. She's feeling comfortable here, right? She's expressing herself. Okay, so Melinda's actually talking. 
So we know she feels comfortable in art enough to express herself. And she's expressing herself through her art. How many of you guys have ever had um, a really kind of crazy art project that you've done? Where you were like, yes. Okay, well, can you explain it? Okay, and did you have an idea of what you wanted, or did you just like feel it and you just decided it? I tried making an elephant, but I built a bear. Uh, so I did. You didn't express what you wanted to originally. No. Um. Which is okay. Stupid. Just a second. Let Let's let Jordan finish. What was your your clay project? I, I don't know. I just mangled stuff together and it came out pretty funny. Cool. Okay, so you just expressed what your what your body was was feeling like you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just let your hands do it with your, your brain cells yeah. and it just went out with your creativity it all kind of goes and you express yourself creatively. Participate. Oh. But <coughs> you were doing something that was an expression of yourself, right? Yes. Okay. Very good. Johnny, were you gonna share one of yours? Johnny, were you gonna share one of yours? Okay. Alright, so we do express ourselves through art. And she's also expressing herself by at least speaking and asking for some resources that she needs here. Ivy opens her mouth to say something, then closes it again. Mr. Freeman studies my homely project. He doesn't say anything, and I'm afraid he's pissed that I took out the palm tree. Ivy tries again. It's scary, she says, in a weird way, not clown scary. Um, how do I say this? Like you don't want to look at it too long. Good job now. Another really positive for her that she's actually got some good things being said to her from a former friend, or actually anybody. That's not the reaction I was hoping for, but I guess it was positive. She could have turned her nose up or ignored me, but she didn't. Mr. Freeman taps his chin. He looks way too serious to be an, an art teacher. He's making me nervous. Mr. Freeman, this has meaning, pain. The bell rings. I leave before he can say any more. What do you think her art project did express? Hey. Who? What? Hi, John. Her love. Did it? In what way? Okay. Well, I think the tape over the rubber doll's mouth is like her not talking. Ah. And her the head in the. Can you cut up on her? No. And then the head in the turkey okay. means like she like doesn't she. Or like that. Very good. I like that interpretation very much. Who agrees? Very good observation. Okay, but why? Why do you think so? Or can you add anything to that? Elaborate on it? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> it's perfect. perfect. Okay, let me rephrase then. Okay, let me rephrase what Johnny said because I really um, think that's a great interpretation. The Barbie being taped, her mouth being taped is the fact that Melinda is not speaking. And if someone puts tape on your mouth, well, actually, when you see tape, is it usually somebody that puts I tape on their hurt. own mouth? No. Yes. You think so? Yeah. Maybe in junior high. <laughs> but generally, we think if we see somebody with their mouth tape, we think, oh, somebody did that to them. So maybe she's not allowed <laughs> to speak versus she's just not speaking herself. And you had mentioned that being inside the cage, or inside the bird, was like being inside a cage. That she feels trapped. And how is that similar to what we know of Maya Angelou? What was, remember what the, the title of her story was? Maya Angelou? Wasn't she the civil rights? Uh -huh. and we, we read her story she about, raped and she was quiet. for five and a half years she didn't speak. And we read, um, the chapter called Mrs. Flowers, who helped her begin speaking again. But the entire, her entire autobiography was called what? Does anyone remember? No, okay. Anyone? Yeah, so we wrote something. No? Why the cage, I know why the cage bird sings. So she felt that she was being, she was in a cage as well. I like your interpretation. Yes? Okay, so, was she in school? She who? Uh, Melinda or Maya? Maya. When? Well, like when she was quiet. Yes. She wasn't. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Did she have to talk at some point when you could call her? Well, you would think so. Did she? According to her autobiography, you she did. How would you refuse to not speak? Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's a good question. We actually get into that um, and we'll actually read um, a non-fiction article about that 
And uh, so I want you to keep that question. I want you to keep that question because and be thinking of it all along. Why would someone decide not to speak? Why is Melinda not speaking? Okay, she she thinks she doesn't have any friends, right? But why does that make you stop? Would you would a normal, healthy person go out and seek friends, talk to them, and try to get friends? But she knows that those people aren't going to talk to her. Okay, she thinks that they aren't going to talk to her. Well, actually, yeah, she didn't even try. Yeah, she hasn't tried. So what makes her not try? Okay, let's see how. Let's continue reading and see how she deals with and who she has helped her deal with. It. Okay, peel and core, page 65. We are studying crude in biology. Ms. Keene has spent a week teaching us the finer points of stamens and pistils, seed pods and flowers. The earth has frozen, it snows lightly at night, but Ms. Keene is determined to keep spring alive in her classroom. The back row sleeps until she points out that apple trees need seeds to reproduce. Reproduce is a trigger word for the back row. They have figured out it is related to sex. The lecture on pistols and stamens turns into a big ha-ha. Ms. Keen has been teaching since the middle age. It would take more than a row full of overheated um, hypothalamuses to distract her from the day's lesson. She calmly proceeds to the hands-on portion of the lab. Okay, so biology, and they're learning about reproducing. Pistols. Pistols. How many of you guys learned all that yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but with Ms. Moore, Mrs. Moore, didn't she do some biology? Oh, that means so. Mrs. Moore? Okay. Does she? Okay. Apples. We each get a Rome or Cortland or Macintosh and a plastic knife. We are instructed to dissect. The back row holds sword fights. Miss Keene silently writes their names on the blackboard, along with their current grade. She takes one point off for every minute the sword fight continues. They go from low Bs to very low Cs before they figure out what is going on. They howl. Back row, that's not fair. You can't do that to us. You don't give, You didn't give us a chance. She takes off another point. They saw their apples mutter, mutter, curse, curse, old cows to the teacher. So, David Petrakis, my lab partner, cuts his apple into eight equal wedges. He doesn't say a word. He is in the middle of a pre med week. David can't make up his mind between pre med and pre law. Ninth grade is a minor inconvenience to him. A zip cream commercial before the feature film of life. Oh, that's good. I like that. What can we tell? Um, what can we tell about uh, this character, David Petrakis, just from this paragraph? I want you to uh, talk to your shoulder partner. Again. Talk to your shoulder partner. What from this Not paragraph can you tell about David Petrakis from this? Okay, go ahead. What do you think? What can you tell about David Petrakis from this paragraph? He's right here. What kind of student is he? What kind of character is he? Secure. He's a good character. How, what, how would you describe him? Good character. Sure, what do you think about him? What do you think this is? Why not? What kind of Why would you call him a good character? Because he's not nice. Why not? What has he done that he's not? <laughs> What you see in that is shown. I don't see that in this here. Oh, he's in the middle of pre with pre med week. So he's actually between pre med and pre law. He's dumb, he's smart. He's smart. Okay. Okay. And so the ninth grade is a minor inconvenience. I've heard he had nice things. What did you say? Is he concerned about school? Take this one. The minor inconvenience. Yeah, no. No, he's, he's excited. Yeah. Chilly sins. Wow. Yeah. So he's thinking about bigger things. He's pretty mad. Can I be done? Yeah. Okay. What did you guys come up with? We came up with uh, what kind of characters. Yeah, smart. What else? Uh, he does. 
In the middle of a free man, free man, free law. And badge as in badge or law as in law. Okay, the feature film is Zip Cream. Ninth grade to him is a Zip Cream for the feature film of life. A Zip Cream doesn't mean anything. The feature film is what you're really concerned about, right? I not so he thinks ninth grade is just something that we're going to take time to for real life. Right? Okay, so what I encourage you guys to come up with is that obviously David Petrakis is smart. And remember, this is the same uh, student who, this is the same student who was in, uh, was in Mr. Neck's class. Okay. Okay. Stop. David Petrakis is the student in Mr. Neck's class that during the debate on immigration challenged Mr. Neck that he needed to let the debate continue. Because when you when you say you can debate this and then you stop someone when they start disagreeing with you, that's not right. And remember he got up and he walked out of class. And that's when um, Melinda said it was a loud silence. Oh, it was, I forget the exact, um, the exact words she used. But said the silence was really loud. Okay. All right. So we know that he's that he's concerned about school. That he's smart. Um, but that that ninth grade is just something small to him, and he's really concerned about. And let's see how his character interacts with Melinda, because she's right now thinking some oh very, very no. negative things about ninth grade. No camera. Right. Apple smell. So is the air. One time when I was little, my parents took me to an orchard. Daddy set me high in an apple tree. Okay, now remember this. She's going back in time. So right now, I'm noticing the signpost memory made. And so I'm going to be thinking, why might this memory be important? Let's be thinking about it. About what? About she's telling us a memory. Why is she telling us a memory? Why is it important? She thinks life. Shh. One time when I was little, my parents took me to an orchard. Daddy set me high in an apple tree. It was like falling up into a storybook, yummy and red and leaf and a branch, not shaking a bit. Bees bubbled through the air, so stuffed with apple they couldn't be bothered to sting me. The sun warmed my hair and the wind pushed my mother into my father's arms and all the apple-picking parents and children smiled for a long, long minute. Why is that important? What's that memory showing us about her? Huh? What is that memory showing us about her? What is that memory showing us about her? Well, that's just way right there. Yeah. Uh, probably in the Put down your mittens. Okay, sit down. Why do you think it's important for us to know this memory? What does it tell us? Yeah, your family actually got along. Yeah. Yeah, the family actually got along before. And do we know, what does that tell us? Why is it important to know that right now it's not getting along, but she had good memories of them getting along before? Why is that important? Johnny, can you, can you share what you think about that? Yes. What do you... What do you think about why it's important for us to know that? That she once had good memories of her, or that she does have good memories of her family. Why? Why do you think? Hi, Johnny. Talk with your shoulder partner while I call the nurse. Talk with your shoulder partner. And uh, Andre, come over here. I can know. And let me. Hear what you Jordan's think about why it's important for us to know that. He beats me up in the bathroom. That's right. <laughs> Very scared. 
to know what hits you. Oh, please, I'll sign it out. Let's do it, man. Well, I'm gonna take my slippers off. Yep, you can take my shoes off and put socks on my socks. I'm gonna slap you with my socks. I need a good grip. Oh, I forgot I had holes in that. Okay, sit down. Dude, you just showing me a dance move. Calm. Ah. Stop it. There isn't any stitching. Hey, why doesn't that girl have to ever do anything? She's reading. Well, I don't care. She should have to answer questions too. She has. She's done. I don't really give a crap. She hasn't done anything today. She didn't do anything yesterday. What do you think? Why is it important that we know that she wants to? What? That's good. What? Do we know that she just put on Ah! Yeah. Good, because why is it important? Why did she stick heat? Um, you know, I'm going to watch her chin off the stairs. Like, bulb her background. Okay. But it gives us, what did, what did we talk about here? Why was it important for readers to know that, that it wasn't like this all the time? She, um, she wants like... Maybe she can get out of the hole that she's in. I don't like sitting here. Yeah, that there's hope that she can get out of this hole that she's in. She knowing that do. at least, knowing that at least can they had, no, they had some good times before. Okay, let's continue on. I'm going to bed. Then. That's how biology class smells. The apple smell. I bite my apple. White teeth, red hard juice, deep bite. David sputters. David. You're not supposed to do that. She'll kill you. You're supposed to cut it. Didn't you even listen? Sure you lose points. Clearly, David missed the apple tree sitting requirements of childhood. I cut the rest of my apple into four fat pieces. My my apple has 12 seeds. One of the seeds has split its shell and reaches a white hand upward. An apple tree growing from an apple seed growing in an apple. Have you guys ever seen that? Right here. One of the seeds has split its shell and it reaches a white hand upward. An apple tree growing from an apple seed, growing in an apple. I show the little plant seed to Miss Keene. She gives me extra credit. David rolls his eyes. Biology is so cool. Okay, First Amendment, second verse. Um, uh. First Amendment, remember, that's the debate that Mr. Uh, Nett had in his room, where David Petrakis, okay, stop. Okay, I can't do this. Thank you. Yep. Can't do this, hate space. Can't do this, hate space. Hunter, Hunter. What? I want you back there for a No. <laughs> I don't need to sit down. I want you back Why? Because I want you to He gets to move. What he got? Okay, yeah, over there. Yeah. Come on, honey. Okay, come over there. I'm not gonna do anything. I want you to sit where you would, where I told you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't shower. Yeah, I mean, he's not gonna wash the toilet. Okay, so we've got First Amendment, second verse. <laughs> Rebellion is in the air. We only have a week left before winter break. Students are getting away with murder, and the staff is too worn out to care. I hear rumors of eggnog in the faculty lounge. This revolutionary spirit is even breaking out in social studies class. David Petrakis is fighting back about the freedom to speak thing. Remember, he got he walked out of class when Mr. Neck um, shut down the debate. I get to class on time. I don't dare use a stolen late pass with Mr. Neck. David takes a seat in the front row and see, um, sets a tape recorder on his desk. As Mr. Neck opens his mouth to speak, David presses the play and uh, record buttons at the same time, like a pianist hitting an opening chord. Do you guys remember old-fashioned? 
Do you remember old fashioned uh, tape recorders? Anybody? No, my yeah. in the 60s. Well, even in the, it was even in the um, 90s that they were really used a lot, and sometimes in the early 2000s. Um, you could play and record. No, it's even be before that with the little gentleman. You ready to listen? Yeah. Totally ready? Okay, uh, tape recorders. Little cassette tapes. You push play to play it, but you push play and record to actually to actually record it. Now you can just push your your iPhone. Why was he playing? Why was he not? Why did he have tape recorder? Really? Why? Why? Okay, I, I can't hear what Phoenix is saying, and I think Phoenix is right on target here. Alright, so we need to just let them get in the features for what he said. Okay, might be. Let's see. I'm cold. Uh, I get to. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Neck teaches the class straight. We are galloping toward the Revolutionary War. He writes, no taxation without representation on the board. Very cool rhyming slogan. Too bad they didn't have bumper stickers back then. The colonists wanted a voice in the British Parliament. No one in power would listen to their complaints. The lecture is going to sound great on the tape. Mr. Neck has prepared notes and everything. His voice is as smooth as Newport Road. No bumps. Uh, so Mr. Neck, because he's being recorded, is really doing a nice job on his lecture. The tape. <laughs> yes, he does. Because remember, she just said that David Petrakis, Petrakis hit the play and the record button at the same time like a pianist hitting the opening chord. So, and everyone knew they were starting. Wait, did it actually hit? Yeah, it would, it actually, you hear a real big click. Yeah, you can hear it. The tape will not be able to pick up the angry gleam in Mr. Neck's eyes, though. Ooh. Okay, so he's He's going along, his voice is being recorded, but he's glaring at David Petrakis. You know what they need instead of glaring? You know what they need? They need a camera type. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't have that here, evidently. Not right now. He glares at David the whole time he's speaking. If a teacher stared murder at me for eight, 48 minutes, I'd turn into a puddle of melted jello. David stares back. Hello. David's in the woods. Okay. Who's that? Okay, so. What's not? David stares back. Even though Melinda said she would fall into a puddle of melted jello. But David stares back. What do we know about David now? How is he acting with Mr. Ness? He's staring back. He's got an attitude like a he's got an attitude like a he's Like what kind of attitude? Is like he a, is he being disrespectful? Is like he a, praising? Like a, is he challenging? Is he like I know it. I know it. I know. I'm right. I'm right and you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong, challenge. Okay. And Melinda, of course, is not of that type. She said she'd melt. She'd melt into jello. The school office. It's the best place to go for gossip. I overhear the soundbite about um, the Petrakis' lawyer while I wait for another lecture from my guidance counselor about not living up to my potential. How does she know what my potential is? Potential for what? When she talks, blah, blah, I usually count the dots in her ceiling tiles. The guidance counselor is late today. So I sit invisible in the red plastic chair while the secretary brings a PTA volunteer up to warp speed on the Petrakis thing. David's parents have hired a big, nasty, expensive lawyer. 
He is threatening to sue the school district and Mr. Neff for everything from incompetence to civil rights violations. David's tape recorder is allowed in class to document potential future violations, kind of like what Phoenix was saying. The secretary doesn't sound too upset about the idea that Mr. Neff could get canned. I bet she knows him personally. Uh, so we again hear more uh, confirmation from Melinda that she doesn't like Mr. Neff. David must have mentioned the hairy eyeball treatment to his lawyer that afternoon because the next day there is a video camera set up in the back of class. Yeah. David Petrakis, Petrakis, excuse me, is my hero. Ah, so the hairy eyeball treatment was what? The stare. The stare. The 48-minute stare. Yeah. Uh, so now there is a video. Okay. Um, we've got a little bit more to go through before we get to. I already read the part. Okay. Read this. Before we get to the end, yes. Wombat's rule. I let Heather talk me into going to the winter assembly. She hates sitting alone most, uh, almost as much as I do. The Marthas have not issued an imperial inv invitation for her to sit with them. She's bummed, but she tries not to show it. In perfect Martha <laughs> style, she wears a green sweater with a huge Santa face on it, red leggings, and fluffy boots. Too, too perfect. I refuse to wear anything seasonal. Heather gives me my Christmas present early. Bell earrings that shine when I turn my head. This means I'll have to get her something. Maybe I'll go hold some and buy a friendship necklace. She's a friendship necklace tie. The bells are a great choice. I shake my head all through Principal Principal's speech to drown out his voice. The orchestra plays an unrecognizable tune. Heather says the school board won't let them perform Christmas carols or Hanukkah songs or Kwanzaa tunes. Instead of multicultural, they have no cultural. Do you guys ever feel like that? Yeah, yeah. That sometimes culture is taken out so it won't offend someone else. Yeah, like here at school about God or whatever. Okay. You know, it's like teachers can't talk about it, but us kids, like, and if like, somebody sees, like, a teacher approaches, like, a teacher will approach you. Right? Yeah. Well, that's happened to me before, not at this school, but, you know, like, at lunch, you know, you pray, and then, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir, but you can't pray, you'll offend somebody. Or something. Oh, uh, well, you can pray inside your head all you want to. God will still hear you. Yeah. Can't, can't do anything about that. Um, but yes, I have, have felt some of that too. Nikki, did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, okay. Um, and one thing uh, that Mr. William had mentioned that he noticed when, when we had given our, when we had given uh, your presentations on the different clans or social groups that we have in, our, in HS, that no one, that no one mentioned the Islanders. Did you guys did you guys ever think of the Islanders as one of our social groups? Yeah. Yes. Did you? Okay, and why why did you um, choose not to put them on? No, I didn't. Oh you didn't think of it. Okay. And he was kind of he was kind of surprised. Because actually, um, Atlantic has, if a I've lot. been given the right information, the correct information, has the highest per capita um, population of uh, Shukis here, or Islanders, Micronesians, because we have more than 200 mm -hmm. uh, that live here in Atlantic. Do they live with Mr. Some of them do. Not all. Uh -huh. well, not two, all. Two, two, two. They like the area. Their families come. Um, the 200 people come. In town, yeah. My question is, so they would be one of the it's like, it's so small, and how do you come from there? This is well, a small town. Well, you hear, um, someone comes here, and then they say they like it, so they tell their family, their family comes, and it's a nice place, it's quiet, they can get good housing, they can get good jobs, but um, they have some different cultural um, traditions than we do, and so it was kind of interesting that we didn't see you guys notice some of their cultural, um, or their group anyway. <laughs> okay. The high point of the assembly is the announcement of our new name and mascot. Principal Principal reads the vote total. These three icebergs, 17. Hilltoppers, 1. Wombats, 32. The other 1,547 votes were write ins or illegible. The Mirror Weather Wombats has a nice ring. We are the Wombats, woozy, wicked Wombats, worried, withdrawn, weepy, weird Wombats. We passed Raven Cheerleaders. An amber cheerleader on the way to my bus. 
They wrinkle their, their brows as they struggle to rhyme wombat. Democracy is a wonderful <laughs> institution. Think okay, so, wombat? That? Wombat. Um, what that? What is it? <laughs> well, they're some trying to rhyme. They struggle to rhyme wombat. Okay, yeah, because they're trying to find something to identify with there. And what do you think? Okay, when I see continued times again and again that they're struggling with their identity, that they're that they're trying to get a new name, I'm thinking, why does that keep showing up? Why do why do they keep having trouble? What do you think our author wants us to understand? Do you see a parallel between uh, the school struggling with their identity and Melinda struggling with her identity? Hmm. Do you see any any connections? What do you think? What do you think, Jordan? What connections might there be between the school struggling with their identity and Melinda struggling with her identity? Hi, Ashley. What elements? Hi, Ashley. What elements uh, make a difference in their identity in the school? Who's tr who's controlling the school's identity? A principal. Who else? Student council. Okay, student council. Yeah. What do we? What do we? Do we just? Yeah. Who else? School board. Yeah. Are they allowing them to vote on any of them? Yep. They just read the vote tally. So students, there's a lot of people that are involved in the school's identity. Do you have a lot of people involved in your identity? That play a part in in no. making you who you are. No, family. Okay, family. Good. What other? Family, family friends. Friends. Yeah, teachers. Who you associate with? Who, who might be your teachers? Yeah. yeah. So our author is trying to help us understand there is a real struggle here for identity, and and we've already gotten <coughs> excuse me already gotten lots of information and talk about different groups and their identities, so we know. Melinda is really struggling with who she is in here. Let's continue as we go on um, for the rest of the week. Continue looking at how she comes up with who she is and how she's expressing herself. Okay. Have a good, a good afternoon. You too. I got to start.